So I just got horrendously banged up, training varieties and opening up packs. So what we're gonna do today is I'm basically gonna go through the process of how you guys recover, man. So we're gonna recover from 94 through 95. So prices are going down. I'm assuming prices are going down because there's a lot of training coming into the game and there's not really viable options to make coins on a training right now. The uh, training rerolls are not that good for the most part. Uh, this man is stupid cheap, man. That's that's a really good price for this card. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stab, even though a middle linebacker came out today, at least for around 240. I get back like 216. That'll be a what 26k profit. Yeah, he just sold. Look at that, man. He just sold 16 minutes ago, bro. We might even go for a smooth 250. And because we got him so cheap, 225 back, that'd be a nice little 30k, 35k. So like in a short amount of time. And normally when the market is fire, the activity is hitting, you're going to be able to make a lot of coins. Now I'm betting on making a lot of coins on this card for the Chiefs theme team. Good start, good start, good start. But for the most part, you just need to understand what cards are going down and why they're going down, right? So we know we got 97s coming to the game. We know we also got like 94s coming to the game, but 94 shouldn't really affect 95 prices too much. Maybe a little bit, maybe we are talking about 5%, but as long as the position is still valuable and they still have decent avail ability, so that just comes down to having some type of knowledge of what each card has to offer, then you're good to go. I think I'll be okay on that Derek Johnson, mainly because he does get lurker. And like I said, I'm betting on the Chiefs theme team and that's one of the better theme teams in the game right now. As far as programs and what filters to snipe in, it's solely gonna be on you, man. I very much know the filters that I'm sniping in right now because I do this all the time. So I know what prices cards are, but if you're not, if you're new to sniping, just pick one filter. So that could be just zero chill. That could be just legends. That could be just 80 through 81s all offense on defense or position by position. It's easier to learn one filter than it is to learn, you know, seven different price points because you can get banged up because Redux is so differently than AKA players. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's so many different price points that you would have to understand. And then you got to understand, okay, like a card like Carmichael, right? I see him at 230. If I see him anywhere anywhere around a 200K flat, I'm buying him because I know his price point is super high. He hovers around 280, 300K. He does have an LTD, but his LTD doesn't go down in price. So I know for a fact that I could get this man off for at least 280-ish. So if I could get one for 200K, I'm cool. And on top of that, there's no cornerback that came out today. So I'm safe on that price point. The only reason why he's going down is because people who have Harold Carmichael, they might be getting rid of him for another car. And, but that doesn't affect the reason why I'm buying them because they getting rid of him for another car that they feel like is better. But then I know somebody out there who want that 6'8 Harold Carmichael and they're willing to pay premium price for it. So that's really all sniping is, man, is finding cards that people are willing to pay premium price for because they're still high-end cards. And Harold Carmichael is a perfect example of a high-end card, 6'8". The new Harold Carmichael just came out at receiver. Somebody get bodied, they like, how am I gonna match this? I'm about to go get Harold Carmichael, you feel me? So like, that's the concept that I like try to make coins off of. And I think that's a pretty easy concept to understand because it basically just depends on how good a card is and what value does the card have to the game. And as far as price points, I mean, you can go off of what your market is telling you at the time you're sniping. But for me, I'm going off of what the market was before this. I know the market is gonna come down a little bit because it's still early in the morning. Promo just came out, so not everybody been able to like get in. But at the end of the day, I know people are going to get in, get banged up on rolls, whatever it is, and then come back and be like, dang, I wanna see how much this quarter Patterson. But they gonna come back and be like, dang, I got banged up. Now the market is increasing again. Okay, let me buy this card that I need to buy. You feel me? So at the end of the day, that's what I'm sniping off of. I'm not sniping off the current market uh, unless it's one of those cards that's like something that I know probably wouldn't go up and doesn't really have a tremendous value to the game. But you also got to understand cards that came out today, like Leonard Fournette, is going to affect a lot of prices. Cards like Al Woods, it's going to affect a lot of prices. Not the, like a lot, but any card that has a high inside stuff, Al Woods becomes now more valuable to the person because he has zero AP inside stuff. And even if the card does have zero AP inside stuff, is this card a low overall? Because if it is, now it's going to be a little bit different as far as price point. The way you can balance that is if a card is faster, if a card is, is just a better card overall and it performs better than that Al Woods, 
would on, on and we're just guessing on it then that's something that you would be like okay i could buy this in a sense and still make profit because i know he'll go back up like for example i know warren Sapp is going to see a decrease but you could already see that he's still high, like at a decent price at 248 i know he'll go down a little bit so if i see him for like 200k i'm going to be one of those people who buy him because i know he's faster than our woods by seven speed that seven speed is a lot and having a slow D tackle it sucks because yes, he'll shed on inside runs, but he won't be able to make the tackle. And I know that from experience of playing the game. So with that being said, if somebody who buys Al Woods, they're gonna be like, yo, yes, he has zero AP inside stuff, but he's too slow to make a play. Let me go get this Warren Sapp again. And then I sell him on an auction block. Boom, I'm making a solid profit. So at this point, I'm just gonna chat with y'all when I actually find a snipe. Okay, so Carlos Watkins. This is a prime example of a card I would not buy one. I don't know if he has inside stuff or not, but he doesn't hover anywhere over 150 to 160K on a normal day. He's a Redux. Yes, Redux is normally sell for good prices, but the way the market is right now, he only hovers around 150, 160. So if you put him up at 150, you're not gonna make too many coins, right? But then at the same time, you also gotta understand if you put him up at 160, it's still not that crazy, but you also have a bunch of D tackles that are better than him. And he's gonna be flying out of packs because training's going down and more people are gonna be rolling variety. So more people are going to be getting reduxes. So potentially you'll see more of him today since he's not that good and he's a D tackle and a good D tackle came out today. You gotta play your cards right. So Will Shields, very interesting card, right? Might, might dabble in this one, might dabble in this one. We got a left guard today. So I just, I wanna dabble in him and see this will be another 25K profit. Like I said, we got a left guard today. We did get a right guard who's a 94 overall, Michael Owenu, but I still think we'll be able to get Will Shields off for a cool 260, 270. But we're gonna play it safe with a 250 just because we got some decent cards in the game. And I'll take a 25K profit. That'll put us almost at 60K profit on two cards. You know what I'm saying? And then you can see, there's a 236, there's a 250, 251, 252. So like, we're good. Could have put him up for like 300, but I wanna see him sell at one of these 250s and then I'll go ahead and put him up at 300. So boom, that's our Derek Johnson. Good profit right there, right off the rip. And that just proves the theory of, you know, buying and selling cars. It just shows you that the profit is there. It does work. And everything that I'm telling you in this video will work as long as you know what cars you're buying. You feel me? You understand where the prices are headed. You understand if this is a good buy right now. Okay, I'm pretty hesitant on this car, but I think I want to just go ahead and buy him. 129 is cheap. Now, the reason why I'm buying this is because this is a set car, right? And we have more cars selling, which is great. Uh, another 250 sold. I don't remember who that was, but this is a set car. So I'm thinking, okay, just what I thought. Th there's, these are not going to be that accessible to people so i'm thinking 160 would be decent and this would be um 144k right this would be a 14k profit it's not the best buy i probably wouldn't buy this if i didn't have a lot of coins but i just knew that there wasn't that many on a block so there's only four on a block and i know that these set pieces they, they hold more value than a normal 94 so that's really why i was leaning into that i don't believe he's a set piece i believe he's the the final piece and for him to be this cheap, I don't think it's a good buy. I mean, maybe you could throw him up 160. There is only three on the block. Okay, maybe I should buy it. There's only three on the block. You know, you take a chance on some of these, you know? He is the final card. I hate buying the final cards of uh, legends that don't automatically hold up like a lot of value, but his normal value is 147. So 160 is not too far off. I'm gonna have to put this one up for an extended amount of time. I don't think he'll sell anytime soon. If he does, I'll be happy. So I ended up buying two more cards and I was on the phone, so I couldn't really explain why I bought these two cards, but I think they're pretty decent. I bought a Tony G at 179 and then I bought a Desmond King at 189. So Desmond King won't be a crazy profit. We're talking about 11K here. This would be about like 26, 27K on this car, five to six cars. We made a total of 111. 11k you guys can get out here and do the same exact thing all you have to do is understand what the cars are going for now what they have potential to go for and find somebody who is willing to pay for these cards and you'll make easy profit just like that